Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Several years ago when I learned Lightroom, there wasn't any masking in it at all. We did have some tools. We had a brush and a graduated filter. A little later, they added a radial filter and then they introduced some rudimentary masks. They added luminance color and depth range masks. But as I mentioned, they were relatively simple and overall not very effective. It is my opinion with the introduction of the new smarter masking that is now found in Lightroom, we have to rethink how we use Lightroom and how we go about processing our images. Previously, what we did globally can now be more effectively done locally. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. And in today's video, I have two different images to show you what I'm talking about. Now, I have this image of the bird, you know, birds standing on the rock. The background is pretty distracting. And I did some processing to it. I did highlight shadows, whites and blacks, and that's pretty much it. I want to sharpen the bird. I want the bird to stand out more. And previously, before we had these smarter masks, I mean, we could use a brush and try to brush the adjustments on the bird and only the bird, but that was very difficult to do. Uh, we invariably get part of the background, especially around the bird's legs and beak. Well, we had to do it globally. So we'd go to texture and maybe turn texture up and turn clarity up and we'd add some saturation or maybe better choice would be some vibrance. I'd go to the detail tab, add sharpening. And as you could see though, it's working fine on the bird, but it is enhancing the background and well, as well and making that more distracting. I want to make the background less distracting. I want the bird to stand out. Well, that's where the local masking comes in. Let me get rid of these adjustments I just did. So I'll reset vibrance, reset clarity, reset texture. So really all I've done globally to this image are highlight shadows, whites and blacks. Now I want to make the bird look better and I want the background to be less noticeable. So I'm gonna get some masking done for that. Go to the masks, I'm gonna select the subject. Just gonna take a quick look. Did it select the subject okay? Well, not really. Um, it missed part of the beak over here. I missed a little bit of the feet over here, but I don't really care about those. It's this beak part though. I want to add to this mask. So I'm going to click on add and I'm going to get a brush and I'm going to have flow and density both at hundred feather somewhere in the middle auto mask on because I want to only apply this adjustment, this brush stroke to the bird's beak. So I'll get a brush that fits the beak. And because I have auto mask on, even if I spill over onto the background a little, it won't paint on the background as long as I leave that plus sign on the bird's beak. It'll only affect the bird's beak. So we added to that. That looks pretty good. I could go on the feet too, but I think the feet are all right, right where they are. They kind of blend into the rock anyway. So I wanted to, as I mentioned, sharpen this bird a little bit and maybe add a little vibrance to it. So what I'm going to do now is I'll go to texture and I'll turn texture up. I'll turn clarity up. And I'm going to overdo it just a little so you could see. I'm going to add some saturation to it, a little bit to the right, and then we're going to add some sharpness too. And you can see it's not affecting the background at all. So I'm only affecting the bird. There's before and there's after. You can see how it only affected the bird. But still, that background is just as distracting as it was before I did these adjustments. I want to make that background less distracting. So I need to get a selection of everything except the bird. I don't need to do a brush, use a brush to do it like we might have tried to do in the past. What we can do is take our existing selection, our existing mask, which can, consists of the brush and the subject selection, go to that existing mask, click on those three dots, and we want to duplicate and invert the mask. And when I do that, everything but the bird is selected. Now I could do something to make that background less noticeable. One thing I could do is go to clarity and take that down. You can see it blurs it out. Go to texture too, take that down. So I'm kind of making it more blurry. Uh, the psychology of our brain, when we look at something, a photograph, let's say, we tend to look at the sharpest parts. We don't notice the blurry parts. So we try to blur out that background a little bit. Also, we look at the more colorful parts. So I'm going to take some saturation away from the background as well. I'm not going to make it black and white, but I'm going to take some saturation away. Also, we look at the brightest parts of an image. So I'm going to go to exposure and I'm going to just darken down that background a little. I don't want to do it too crazy, but just a little. 
just a little, very subtle, but still enough where I'm making that background less noticeable and putting more of a spotlight on the bird. Let's do a before after as far as the masks are concerned. My global adjustments that I did, the highlight shadows, whites and blacks are still the same. There's before the masks, after the masks. So I think you'll agree that the new smart masking really helps us better process images, particularly images like this, wildlife images or any image that has a strong subject in it. Um, I, I think you'll find that these, this masking will really help you, you know, process a better image. Now, it also works great with portraits. Let's go to this image here of this woman. This, now, this is a stock image. I didn't do much processing to it because it is a stock image. I just went and took blacks down just to make the background darker. Now, typically what I like to do with a portrait or a lifestyle image, which this is more akin to, is I like to sharpen the person's clothing. Now, there's not much here showing. We've got some straps here, a little bit of shirt there. So we could sharpen that. We want to sharpen her hair, sharpen her eyes, sharpen her lips, sharpen the chair. We don't want to sharpen her skin. So how do we go about doing this? Now, in the past, it was almost impossible to do, but now it's it's quite easy, really. We're going to select the subject. So we're going to select the subject. Now we got the entire subject selected, but I don't want to include the skin in these adjustments. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract from this selection with a color range mask. When I choose that, I'll get an eyedropper. All I need to do is click on the color I want to remove from the mask. I'm just going to click on the middle of her forehead. Now you could see when I hover over that pin that I just applied, what it's showing is in red is not what is going to be adjusted. What it's showing in red is what is going to be removed from the overall mask. To see the overall mask with that removed, just come off that pin. And you can see, whatever is red now is going to get adjusted. That would be her hair, her eyes, her eyebrows, her lips, and the chair. But it's not perfect selection, is it? We still have part of her skin here and there being selected. Well, what we can do is the color range comes with this slider, this refine slider. We can move it to the right and just kind of refine it a little bit. You can see how it's kind of pulling it away from her skin a little better, but still leaving it on her hair, her clothing, the chair, the eyes, the eyebrows, the lips. Now, if this refined slider doesn't work very well, you can add to the color range subtraction by holding in the shift key, and you'll see that the eyedropper gets a little plus sign to it. That means you're adding to that selection. So I could click and various areas that I want to uh, include in the color range I'm removing from the overall masks. I think this is good enough though. And I want I mentioned I want to sharpen these things. So I'm going to go to texture, add some texture, add some clarity, add some sharpness, maybe even add some saturation. Okay, let's do a before after. Now let's do before after the mask. There's before and there's after. And you can see that it's predominantly affecting her hair. It's affecting the chair. It's not affecting her skin barely at all. But as far as her skin is concerned, I'd prefer to soften that. So we need to get a selection of her skin. Well, we just selected everything but her skin. So what I could do is what I did on the previous image. I could copy and invert that. To do that, let's go up to mask one, click on these three dots right here. We're going to duplicate and invert that mask. When we do that, you'll see we have everything else selected pretty much. So what I could do here is I could refine this. You can see it's got part of the chair. Go to the color range because that had that slider that I moved to the right. What I want to do this one is move it to the left just to refine it, make it so it's not affecting the chair as readily. Just affecting her skin and I want to soften her skin. The best way to do that is go to clarity and I'm going to overdo it so you could see that it's really just affecting her skin. So I'm really overdoing it. You could go to texture too. I would not do it this, this much in real life. She looks funny. It looks funny, doesn't it? Um, maybe add a little saturation as well. Here, let's do it more realistic. All right. So there's before, after the masks. There's before and there's after. All right. We go back up to that inverted mask. This is the mask for the skin. And you could rename these. 
you could like double click on it and call this a uh, skin let's say you know so we know what that is affecting and just come in and better soften her skin and you see it's not affecting her hair or the chair or really anything but her skin and that's this kind of new smarter masking i'm i'm trying not to say those two letters that everyone's saying now again one of them is an I and the other one is an A, but they're not in that order because I think that's overused. But the, the masking is smarter. It's a little easier to select just what you want to select because you're, it will find the subject in the image. And it could find, if you had, a let's say, a landscape image, it could find the sky in the image um, automatically. And it does a very nice job at doing that. And because you could manipulate it, you could add to that selection you could subtract from that selection. You could invert and you could copy and invert the selection. Or as they say, when you click on the three dots, duplicate and invert that mask or that selection. Um, it makes it very easy for you to locally adjust what you need to adjust in the image. So that's why I'm saying we really need to rethink how we go about using Lightroom, particularly uh, people like me that have been using Lightroom for years and kind of have a workflow um, that we don't even acknowledge and think about. We just go in and start processing images because we know it so well. Well, with these new tools, we could more effectively process our images. And I'm going back through some older images, like this image of uh, the birds, pretty old. So I'm going back through some older images to see what I could do with the local adjustments to make them better than I did when I first took the shots and adjusted and processed them at that time. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.